If you want to get an idea of how small a nanometer really is, you'll need to take a piece of hair from your head. Go on, it won't hurt. Got it. Now take a good close look at that strand of hair. Not much to look at, is it? If we were to shrink you down, smaller than the smallest thing you can see with the naked eye, you will find that your piece of hair starts to look a lot more interesting. You are now about the size of a red blood cell. Your strand of hair is a massive tree compared to you. Even at this size, you're still about a thousand times too big to be considered nano. To get you down to the nano scale, we will have to shrink you to about 100 nanometers tall. Hey, where are all the lights? You are now smaller than the wavelength of visible light. You are practically invisible. But for the sake of demonstration, I think we should turn on some lights. At this size, the red blood cell is 1,000 times bigger than you are. It is like an enormous stadium. Welcome to the nanoscale. You could probably hold a common cold virus in your hands quite comfortably now. The rhinovirus is only about 30 nanometers across and is nearly impossible to see next to the red blood cell. A red blood cell is too big to be considered nano. However, it's made up of all kinds of nanomaterials. If you were to look close enough, you would see that the outer walls of the cell are stabilized by a flexible, mesh-like protein skeleton. The bars and connectors that make up this mesh are considered part of a nanomaterial. Without these reinforcing nanostructures, the cell would be much more fragile and not nearly as flexible. It wouldn't stand a chance in your body. Everything is made up of nanomaterials. Nanomaterials are an arrangement of molecules and atoms that, when combined, create stable building blocks that can be made into larger, more complex materials and structures.